Great. Well, thank you for both of you. My name is Mrs. Duke. I'm the advisor of this group and a teacher at the Audison. We're so thankful that you were willing to talk to us about your memories. It's um, nice to be here. This is Cormac. Hello. So he's going to read some questions. And you know anything you don't remember, obviously that's fine. <laughs> But if you do, you know, if you want to, I guess, sort of take turns answering, that would be great. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Are we starting? Okay. So wait. Let's make sure. Hey guys, Edith, can you sh yeah. show us your face more? Yeah, your camera's not camera. center. I want to see your beautiful face. She does have a nice face. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And um, Connie, can you sit back a little bit? I, I can take face. this backrest out. I have a backrest if I take that out. Oh, Just dear. so we can see your, your face completely. Yeah. Is it better? Better? Yeah. better? A little yeah. better. Can we see your chin? Not this. <laughs> oh, oh, you know what? Uh, sit, sit on a pillow, Connie. There you go. That looks good. Yeah. Should I sit on a pillow? Uh, I don't want to. Okay. Uh, that, that looks good. Is I just want right? to. That'll be okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having us. I, yes, that's a privilege. Okay, sure. So. Thank you. Sure. Okay. Um, well, I have blockage here. Okay. I, I wish I could get rid of this piece in the middle. Mm. Oh dear. Where, okay. Uh, so. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just trying to expose my face. Okay. Um. Did Did you guys grow up in Arlington? Yes. You did? I did for part of my growing up years. I only stayed at Arlington through the seventh grade. And then you moved in eighth? Yes, to Lexington. Hmm. Um, did you, were lots of your relatives, like parents, grandparents, did they live in Arlington too? Or like? Only by. My parents and family did. My grandparents, I'm the first generation in this country. They were all in Sweden. Yeah. What about you, Miss Ward? Yes, I was born in Arlington, just a few blocks oh, from here. My grandparents were from Sweden, and my father was born in Cambridge. My mother was born in Brooklyn, New York. And uh, I've just lived in Arlington, except for the time when I was married, living in another place for 15 years. Okay. Um, what, what year did you enter the Audison? 19. 40, uh, 1944. The same for me. Hmm, same year. Oh. How did you guys get to Dollar? Not Odyssey. Um, did you like bike? Did you ride a cow? Did you walk? I walked to and from. I walked also. Uh, I walked from the Audison up through the woods. It's still there. Mm -hmm. And then up Oakland and over toward Wachusett. And then I had to come home for lunch, of course. So there was a lot of walking. Yeah. Easy yeah. to keep thin. When you guys were students, how big was the building compared to how big it is now? smaller. They didn't do an addition till the 70s. 
Uh, it, it wasn't very large. Do you remember Edie? How, Not how really. Many, no. I can't remember how many people or anything were there. How long was the school day typically? I don't remember what time it started. I was it eight thirty. Do you remember Edie? Eight or eight thirty. Yeah. To what? Three. Three. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but of course we came home for an hour and a quarter. Yeah. For lunch. Um, what was the library like? I don't remember the library. I don't know. If I don't had... either. I don't think there was one. The yeah. schools <laughs> couldn't afford to hire librarians, I don't think. Maybe that was the reason. But I, why wouldn't I remember the library? That's strange. Yeah. What were like your typical tools? Like, did you use typewriters or calculators? Did you use like, no, like what? no, none yeah, of that. Not yeah, till high school. Just paper and pencil. Mm -hmm. No pen. Pen. You couldn't erase anything. There's a warning for a windstorm, and I saw an Alexa. I'll have to get rid of it. Alexa. Yeah. Oh. I don't there's a warning for a windstorm. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. What was there like a dress code and what type of dresses would you wear if there was one? Well, there was actually back in our days, there was a dress code that went for everything. Girls didn't wear pants and they wore dresses or skirts and that type of thing. Um, but I don't think there was a school-induced code that we had to abide by. Okay. Ms. Do you remember? Sorry. You, Ms. Fabian, can you please? I don't, I don't think I owned a pair of, uh, well, they called it slacks. Now it's pants. If you did wear them, uh, I think you're supposed to take them off under your dress when you got to school and not mm -hmm. wear them. So what we did was had froze ourselves going down the hills in the ice cold days. And we had bare legs because we wouldn't put on funny stockings. They're so proud kids, junior high kids are proud of how they look. Mm -hmm. And if your legs would freeze with ankle socks and penny loafers. Mm. Um, what type of languages would be taught other than English, if there were any? French. French? I don't think there was English, uh, Spanish. I don't think so. Mm -hmm. French, it could have been, but it's Latin, of course. Latin, French. What languages did you guys take? None. None? I took French one year and loved it. Yeah. But I couldn't continue. I got good marks in it too. Was there a cafeteria? No. No. None? No way. So you ate in your classroom? No, you were you home to eat. eat. You, you walked home. Walked, walked home, home back again. Wow. Yeah. Well, be quite the walk was, up the hill. We did that in elementary school too. Of course. Didn't matter if there was snow as high as your neck. You still have to, there was no excuse not to go. Um, so what were the lunches that you ate at home like? Like, was it a quick lunch or? Like, what did you eat at home? Soup or a sandwich. Or... Campbell soup. <laughs> Remember? Tomato Lemon. soup. Cheese sandwiches or. Yeah. Um, was there recess or like time that you had to do stuff? 
I don't remember anything like that. Are you speaking of Jim? Um, I'm. Jim. Yeah. I think she's okay. Edie, do you remember okay. going out for recess or anything like that? I, no, I don't. I no remember recess. it from grammar school, but I don't remember junior high having that. Mm -hmm. There was a gym. We had to wear gym suits. Do you remember that, Edie? The gym uh, suits? Not, not until I got into high school. Oh, we didn't have gym suits until high school? I didn't. But I was in Lexington by then, too. But you're a year younger than I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, what was Jim like? I don't recall that we ever had any. I think they thought we got enough exercise walking home for lunch <laughs> and um, that type of thing. Yeah. <laughs> it it's hard for me. Ahead, I, keep thinking, I get mixed up the high school and the gym. I think of high school, what we did, you know, and I'm not sure about what we did at junior high. Um, I don't remember sports teams, but I, I don't know what it is. I just don't remember that. Yeah. Um, what were like the people divided up into other than like classes? Was were there like groups of students that would stay in that group? I don't think they did that. I, no, I don't recall anything like that. I've, I've seen that done at another school that I went to. They uh, moved the desks all around into groups. But that was a little advanced when I was in uh, elementary school. But no, I don't remember much of that. You didn't really mix with the other students that much. Hmm. No. How many students would be in each class? What do you think, Edie? I would say 20 to 20, that and 20, between 20 and 25. That sounds reasonable. At bracket school, we had 30 in the class, and there were two grades of 30, so that was 60, which was a lot for the Depression. They didn't have as many big families. Um. If students did get in trouble, like what would they get in trouble doing? Talking in class, talking to each other. Uh, you'd have to stand in front of the class for a while and just face the class. Nobody likes to do that. Yeah. I think that was the punishment, but well, then I'm some, not sure. Some kids were sent to the principal's office. Oh, that's right. I forgot about that. Why were they sent there? <laughs> they were incorrigible. <laughs> what was it, Eddie? Not really. I said they were incorrigible. But that, that isn't oh, it. I mean, they would have to have done something, either fighting with somebody or, you know, it would be something important. It wouldn't just be a, a little infraction no. of the rules. So, yeah. You're not supposed to chew gum. <laughs> class. That was very bad. Yeah. yeah, but you didn't go to the principal for that. No. No, I, I don't remember many kids going to the principal, but maybe no. they, you'd have to get it from another source. I don't know about that. Yeah. Um, did, did the schools have like fire drills? I don't remember fire drills. They must have had it. Yeah. 
I just don't remember. Yeah, I can't remember either, but there again, I think it's a rule that has been forever. Oh, I can remember I can remember in grammar school, so I'm sure we must have had it in junior high. Yeah, you can I can remember more of the grammar school fire drill. This. Um, did anything scary happen? Like maybe there's a rabbit animal in the building or somebody in there that was not supposed to be in there? No, I don't remember anything. I don't either. Nothing that bad. Mm. Was it hard to earn good grades? Was it hard to what? Was Get it hard? good grades. Yeah. Good marks in school. How was it hard to? Well, it depends a lot on the subject matter. I mean, I've never been a math student, and math was difficult. I never got good grades in it. Um, in fact, I had a teacher that said she'd pass me if I promised never to take another math course. But um, <laughs> <laughs> promise. That was later on. That wasn't it, Allison. Um, but um, I was on the same boat with math. Yeah. Uh, the first D I ever had in my life was algebra. Mm -hmm. I just couldn't seem to. Now, maybe a parent would help, but my mother and father never had algebra, so there's nobody to help. Another student probably could have helped. Um, what classes did you have? Oh. Uh, art. We had a whole class for penmanship. Can you imagine that? And we we start, stopped using the ink well. We had to do the penmanship with a pen with pen and ink. And then the next year they got the other kind of pens. But before that, you had to learn the penmanship with pen and ink. I had home economics. They taught nutrition. We had a, a cooking teacher, economics. Um, they had sewing. Sewing. Mrs. Mrs. Lee was the home economics. And Miss Lachute was the penmanship teacher. And she was young and very, very nice and very friendly. Uh, Mrs. Miss Emerson was the music teacher. We had a music supervisor come to to test how we were doing. Uh, Miss Marset was Mrs. Oh, there are very few Mrs. teachers. Mrs. Marset was a French teacher, and uh. uh Miss Vardabedian, Miss Vardabedian, she was a ge geography teacher. But what she would do was when you got in the room, she would say, now turn to such and such a page and copy that whole page. And it would, copying pages would take the whole, <laughs> it was really kind of funny. We couldn't understand that. <laughs> You always have one person that's sort of different. Uh, Any other classes or teachers come to mind? Yeah, Miss Doyle, Mrs. Doyle, she was a seventh grade teacher and she wanted us to send a V mail, not email, Victor V mail to. Uh, someone in the war, a serviceman. She said, we need to send a V-mail. And I thought, oh, what a, who am I going to send it to? I don't have anybody special I know that I could send. But I just went to my sister and asked her, and she had a boyfriend in the Navy. She said, you can write to him. And so I said, what will I say? And she made up the thing for me. So she did my homework.
But it was a nice idea, too, for the kids to think of somebody else in the war. Yeah. Um, what are some of your favorite memories of Audison? Uh, I remember Mr. Audison. He, he was a respected man someone you look up to. He was serious. I never talked to him individually, but we all respected him. And uh, he, he had a face that is similar to President Nixon, somebody serious, but very, he, he was a very good man, Mr. Odyssey. Yeah, and he lived in the top of the woods there where I used to cut through each day. And he had a house right there in Oak, uh, Gray Street. What about you, Miss Fountain? I think one of my most memorable things was an assembly that we had when President Roosevelt died. It was an extremely meaningful um, situation. and. Um, we sang his favorite hymns and everything. And at that point, religion wasn't in the schools. So it was a, a deviance from what we were used to, but it was very, very well done. And I remember that almost vividly. Mm -hmm. um, That's interesting, because I don't remember that. Oh, I might have been away. I did go to another school for the winter in Florida. It could have been at that time. Well, this was April of 45. No, I was there in 45. It was 46 that I was missing for the winter. That's strange that I wouldn't have been remembering that when I remember everything else. That's odd. Um, did Audison have any like sports teams or main sports? I don't know anything about that. Do you? I don't, I don't remember anything of that nature. Because I'm not that into sports anyway. I didn't like gym. <laughs> like I said, all of our walking to and from school, they probably thought we got enough exercise. We sure did. And, and then babysitting after school, walking kids all over. Um, did you know most of the students in your grade? No. 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 School was pretty big. We didn't have contact with each other much, like clusters of groups, clusters to work on a project, things like that never happened. We were more individual and didn't have the closeness to the other kids. Well, we didn't have a cafeteria. There wasn't that time that we could get together and make friends and know everybody. That's right. And the sports not being there, um, that was another area where, you know, we make, we make friends in school. It's difficult to build a friendship in a classroom, and that's where we were. You were there for the classroom, and you were gone. That really explains it, Edie. Yeah. Um, did you have a favorite friend or friend group while you were at the Audison? I did only because the neighborhood kids came, you know, were in the same school. It wasn't uh, building new friendships. It was just um, keeping the old ones alive. I'm trying to think. I made a couple of new friends. But... A couple, but there wasn't a lot. 
any well, if it had been an interest group when you get to high school you join Gilbert and Sullivan or something that you would be with other people in a smaller group but it wasn't that way at junior high level um how did you talk to some of your friends like since you didn't have like email or texting did you just go over to the house or like what do you do well, telephone oh yeah we that was the our means of communication yeah and going to their homes i i was very fortunate because a few of my friends that i met uh I went to their homes and I sort of felt like their family knew me well too. We'd go inside their home and and sometimes they even invited me to go on vacation with them, a family. And that, that's how you really learn so much. I don't know if it's that way now. I, I was fortunate in that way. Um, what was some of the popular music of the time? Oh, um, hmm. let me see. Oh, oh so the chip of my, I, I knew all the songs. I could still sing them. <laughs> I know all the words. Smoky. You know, uh, music of the day fun. really told a story. I mean, they were words that were coordinated together and told you something um, to the tune of music, whereas today a lot of the music is words at random they're not um they're not telling a story so you don't remember them as well either that's right yeah uh oh, i know i know a couple of really I, once in a while i sing them myself even now they were they were they sort of stayed you know Yeah. Um, what were some of the books you read and did you have any favorites? Did I have what? what? Favorite books. Oh, uh, I did. Did you have a favorite book, Edie? A favorite book? A favorite book. Yeah, well, I know I did. <laughs> I might have, but it was 77 years ago. I can't remember it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I couldn't. Uh, there was a book that really impressed me. And I asked a friend if he could look it up. And so he looked it up. And I remember very well now. It impressed me, this book, I, in my whole life. What I read in that book I sort of went by in my whole life. The name of it was In His Steps by Charles Sheldon. And it, it impressed me. And to this day, I, I think of that. It was a very interesting story of someone choosing how to live their life. Yeah. And in junior high, you, you get disappointed. Some at that time, some of the friends would start changing their way of life. It was very popular, uh, smoking and things, and I'd be disappointed if my friends started to smoke. So uh, different things were going on. Like now, it's so much more serious. Junior high is hard for kids. 
uh, very hard. They're changing and uh, the culture is influencing them. So. Did you guys have any sad memories at the junior high? Hmm. Other than the death of the president. And, yeah. Ugh, activities around that. I saw a big thing that that was upsetting. What was upsetting? I sold my finger. Oh, oh, tell about that. <laughs> oh, Mr. Patterson did. In sewing class, somehow or other, I got my finger and then the, the, the needle went right through my uh, fingernail on my index finger oh. <laughs> and broke off the sewing machine. So that was a little traumatic. <laughs> But Edie, you told me that I asked you who helped you with it. Did you take you somewhere to have it done? They took me to, to Mr. Otteson. Mr. Otteson's office and he pulled it out. Mr. Otteson took care of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you, he's a nice man. <laughs> I like that story. Yeah. Do you guys have any other memories you'd like to share with us? Just generally, it was a pleasant experience. Yeah. I didn't want to leave when we, you know, we were moving, but they decided to take me and not leave me behind, so. You wanted to go to another school? Well, no, when I moved, I had to go to another school. But I did want to come back to Arlington at high school, but we had to pay tuition. Back in those years, there weren't that much money around to pay tuition. To go to so, yeah, and transportation and everything else, so. Oh, I thought of something, the graduation. We had a graduation from Audison, uh, Junior High West, as it was. Yeah. And we had to make up a, uh, a song. We made up the words and used Columbia, the gem of the ocean for the uh, music part and the lyrics we had to make up ourselves. And I have it somewhere, but I couldn't seem to find it. Uh, so they, they've had a nice graduation. Yeah. And I was glad to get back for it because I was away for the winter and uh, I went to another school in Florida. I, I did like that school because it was, uh, I made a lot of friends in a short time. It was, smaller probably and I seem to fit in that environment better a small environment mm -hmm. being shy at the time but I was glad to come back and graduate with my class okay um we're going to end it soon I believe so yeah Thank you for coming. You're welcome. Yeah. Thank, thank you for letting us go back on our memories. Yes, it's yes. good, isn't it, Dee Dee? It is. Thank you so much. That was so fun to hear about. <laughs> that was just oh, great. Yeah. That was really was good wonderful. to see you. Thank I you. Miss you. Thank I you so much. I was a teacher when You're I was very welcome. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> All right, okay. thank you. Bye bye. You were a very bye. good interviewer. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. This is Have a happy new year. Happy, happy new year. Hello. Happy new year.
a happy rest of your school life. <laughs> so make the most of it. It's a good time in life. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I love school. Thank you so much. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.